and welcome to episode 4 of Project Slave 1. In the last episode, you'll see my design for Slave 1's rotating cockpit brought to life with a variety of techniques. After I finished the cockpit module, I took some time out and got to thinking how hard would it actually be to make the cockpit rotate? Initially, I thought it would involve major surgery, but after a while, I worked out that in theory, I should be able to adapt what I've already made. I wasn't sure quite how much I'd be taking on, but as they say, nothing ventured, nothing gained, so I fired up the Dremel and set to work. A quick word of warning, this episode does jump around a lot, as I'm trying to pull several aspects of this build together, but don't worry, it all turns out well in the end, so please, just stick with it. As you can see from my cockpit animation, the flight deck rotates on two axes. Pivoting it on the side wall so it tilted back would be fairly easy, but making the flight deck rotate smoothly and stay flat was going to be tricky. While rummaging around in the garage, I found a 38 by 9 mm bearing and reckoned that this would be a good starting point from which to build the flight deck. The bearing was shallow enough to fit within the floor unit of the cockpit, but also had a big enough diameter to create a stable platform to support the console and seats. Using the original design in my CAD software, I redesigned the floor, building it around the new centre bearing. To make 3D printing easier, I made the yellow back plate for the ladder a separate part. The rotating floor for the seats and console was also printed separately. I worked out that if I was careful, I could reuse the ladder, D-shaped floor, seats and console as long as I could get the original design apart. The core part was exported into my slicer software and prepared for 3D printing in ABS as usual. The original design basically remained, but I needed a figure to pilot Slave 1. Bradley Harris, who designed the figure I 3D printed in the previous episode, kindly offered to modify his Boba Fett to suit my cockpit, and I was in business. A big shout out to Bradley for his help on this project. There's a link to his channel in the description, but more on that later. Being only about two inches tall, I decided to print Boba integral with his seat on my resin printer. It was a difficult part to print, as whatever orientation I went for, I knew there were going to be issues with supports or cleaning up of the part. It was just a case of coming up with the best compromise solution. The final print actually came out really well. Sure, the supports were a bit of a nightmare, and there were bits I needed to build up with Milliput, but at least I had my seated figure. While Boba was printing, I turned my attention to the cockpit canopy. With a project like Slave 1, the canopy was always going to be one of the biggest problems, and could either make or break the build. I decided to make a start by designing it in my CAD software, and at least getting a final shape that I was happy with. I needed to design the canopy so it fitted neatly on all four sides to the main hull, and followed the complex curves of Slave 1. I started by designing a 3mm thick shell, based on careful measurements of what I'd built so far. I'd been thinking about how to make the canopy since the very beginning of the project, and had narrowed it down to three main options. I could print it in clear filament on my Ultimaker printer, but the results I'd seen wouldn't give me the clarity I was after, even after extensive polishing. I could print it in a clear resin, the only problems being my resin printer wasn't big enough, and I couldn't get any clear resin for my current printer anyway. Finally, I could try vacforming. This old school method was tried and tested, and fortunately, a fellow member of the local model club had a vacforming machine. Now I just had to make a mould. I began by 3D printing the shell I'd designed on my Ultimaker. At least then I'd have a physical starting point to see what I was dealing with. Fortunately, it fitted on the printer. I opted to print it this way up, as whichever orientation I had it in, it was going to need supports, and I figured that having them on the outside would be neater, use less material, and be a lot easier to clean up. Pretty much fresh from the printer, I decided to test fit it to the hull. This went well, apart from it being too wide, too long, and the wrong profile at the front. It fitted about as well as a pig in a fridge. I decided I needed to take a break, 
I wanted to tackle something a little less stressful. So I decided to take some time out and have a go at painting the Boba Fett figure I've 3D printed in the previous episode. He was already primed and good to go, so I broke out my Archive X paints and got stuck in. I checked out lots of YouTube figure painting videos and decided to base coat Boba with a coat of Archive X Engine Black and then build up the colours from there. I started with good intentions, but as you probably know, I hate painting, and trying to film my hand-fisted attempts didn't go well, so this is all you're getting. I'm really sorry. So, I now had a wrecked cockpit, a canopy that didn't fit, that I had little confidence I could resolve, and a figure that looked like black noir. Not good. I needed a break from my break. From my break. After spending some time on Project Stug, I finally had a plan. I started by tackling the canopy, as I reckoned that if I had to send it away, at least I could get on with another part of Slave 1 while I waited. I had learned from the Mark 1 version, and the Mark 2 was better, but after some careful filing and sanding, the Mark 3 cockpit fitted perfectly. I finally felt I was making progress. At least I now had a canopy that fitted, and looked good. Now I just had to make it clear. My preferred option would have been clear resin. Hopefully I can do that on a future build, and maybe even update Slave 1 one day. We'll see. I finally had the new parts for the cockpit cleaned up, and they even fitted together. The bearing fitted snugly into the main section, and allowed the flight deck to rotate smoothly. This worked out way better than I'd hoped. I guess I got lucky, because I also managed to save the ladder, seats, main console and joysticks. These were all parts I wouldn't have to remake. This was such a relief. Vacuum forming was the only option I had for the canopy, and to make the buck, I needed to make my 3D print solid. I had to compensate for the clear plastic moulded on the outside and spent a day filing and sanding it down, to allow for the half millimetre thickness it was going to be moulded in. I made a quick cradle from Lego, and built up the sides of the canopy with gaffer tape, to support the infill medium I was going to use. I used a casting material, very similar to Plaster of Paris. It's a fine powder you mix with water to a paste, and then pour in. I wasn't sure how much I would need, or how quickly it would go off, so I mixed up small batches, which worked really well. Just a quick note, don't use something like polyfiller. It won't go hard in the large amounts you need to mix up for something like this, even if you leave it in a warm place for three days. An hour later, and the stone cast is fully set, and I can remove the tape. I've successfully made what appears to be a rock. It's totally solid, and weighs a ton. It should be perfect for vac forming. After a bit of tidying up, and filling a few holes caused by air bubbles, this is what I've got. A perfect buck. And there's more good news. I managed to paint Boba. The colour scheme I went for is based on the Empire Strikes Back. There are lots of variations on Boba's colour scheme across the Star Wars universe, but I decided this classic version was the one for me. I used a lot of acrylic washes to add shadow to the suit and armour. The base was made from milliput, with some fine grit glued into the surface. His boots and lower legs were blended with some weathering pigments, to match the terrain. The markings on his armour were homemade decals, printed on my inkjet printer. You can see how these are made in my how-to video on DIY decal printing. Again, thanks to Bradley Harris for creating the files for this wonderful figure. Please check out his channel and subscribe to see more of his stunning work. And if you have a 3D printer, download some of his projects. He sculpted some fantastic subjects. While I had the paints out, I tackled the new cockpit parts as well. I added some more decals in exactly the same style as before, and even painted Boba Fett again. This rotating module went together really well and at last I felt I was getting somewhere with the cockpit. Now I just had to fit it into the main cockpit unit, and make it work.
With the ladder and D-shaped floor fitted, I can insert it between the cockpit walls and push in the two retaining plugs that support the rotating unit. The unit is installed in the landing position, with Boba facing forward. Then, like the animation, the flight deck is turned through 180 degrees. The floor unit is then rotated back through 90 degrees to the flight position. As planned, the floors line up in both positions. I think this makes a good solution to the cockpit of this incredibly charismatic, but totally bonkers spaceship. And there's more good news. After a few attempts to get the vac forming dialed in, I have a successful moulding of the canopy. I'd like to thank Steve for his help and advice, without which this would never have happened. Thanks, Steve. The brass blocks are added to control the stretch of the plastic as it's formed. Most of these canopies will serve as test pieces to work out fit, fixing and finishing methods. The best one will be held back for the final finished model. I've added styrene details to the perimeter of the cockpit based on photos of the studio scale model. To the front of the cockpit hull I've added a styrene lip to hold the front edge of the canopy. The sides fit neatly in place and I'll add a smaller lip to the rear when I detail the outside of the hull. With everything now painted, let's finally put the cockpit together. The cockpit unit slides in from the back. It is a bit awkward now with the plugs for the rotating section fouling the inside, but it eventually goes in. Now to test the transition, to make sure everything works. The flight deck still rotates and the cockpit unit tilts back with no clearance issues. And for the final touch, the canopy. It fits perfectly. With the cockpit finally finished, I could now turn my attention to the tail section. The front and rear lower hull fit well, but the tail is way off. It's currently too high, but that's an easy fix, and we'll have to wait till the next episode. I'll have to fill and sand the hull first, then detail the underside of the tail before they can get bonded together for good. I'm really pleased how this build is going. There's still a lot to do, and a few more problems to overcome, but that's all part of the fun of scratch building. I hope you're enjoying Project Slave 1. If you are, please share with your friends, and make sure you subscribe to my channel. So you catch my next video when it goes live, click on the bell icon. As you can see from my channel, I always have lots of projects going on, which I hope you'll find interesting. These range from my staples and vine models, featured in Sarah's vlog, to short projects and my popular how-to series. If you have any questions about Project Slave 1, just leave them in the comments and I'll get back to you. Thanks for watching.